Do you know how to start it, or did you? I think I did. Yeah, it says record. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Let's go ahead and keep going. All right. Do you want me to stop it, or? No, I'm going to count to five and then get started. Okay. Then I'll trim the front. All right, so we're starting week uh, 10 and 11. This is our sensors work. And so our first sensor we're going to work with is our temperature sensor. Remember, this is a part of our larger project, our fish tank control system. Between now and the end of the term, we'll finish up with sensors, then the teams will program and get the fish tank control system to work effectively. So let's talk about the temperature sensor. In the reading, I'm just going to review the reading a little bit. Our UNO32 is going to provide 3.3 volts to our uh, two resistor series circuit. Our thermistor, which it is going to detect our temperature changes, is one of the resistors in that circuit. We also have a 10,000 ohm resistor in series with it. So our UNO32 is going to measure the voltage across the thermistor. And remember this is a negative temperature characteristic device, meaning if the temperature goes up, the resistance goes down. And so one thing to think about is the resistance of this value goes down, and this value remains unchanged, that means the voltage here also goes down. So a temperature rise in, means the te uh, voltage should drop. So again, the voltage across this um, thermistor is going to be a function of the voltage that's applied to it times the ratio of the values of the resistors. And so that's going to be proportional to the temperature that we see. And so we're going to be taking data today to compare the voltage on the thermistor to the temperature that we actually uh, place the thermistor in. So let's talk about that circuit, setting up this circuit right now. Most of it will be set up for you, but you should be familiar with it in case you need to troubleshoot it. Let's take a look at this. Again, uh, an analog output is going to provide um, our signal, but first we have to power it. So we take the 3.3 volts off the UNO32 and it goes down onto the board and comes into a 10K resistor. Out of the 10K resistor, um, out through the thermometer, which or the thermistor, which is on the other end of this wire. So let's follow that real quick. Roll right over here. Again, it's tied in on the panel, and the thermistor is in, right now it's in the side of the tank. I'm going to go ahead and take it out real quick. Um, we'll have a wrench for you to do this, but I've unloosened this one already. So there's our thermistor. It needs to be in our uh, water source in order to do our temperature. The signal comes back on the circuit and then comes back and touches ground. So just to review this one more time, we came out of the 3.3 volt source through the first resistor and that passed on through the thermistor and then back to ground. So we completed this two, two resistor series circuit and the piece that we didn't talk about was this voltage measurement right here. So the analog read command is going to be used and it's connected to A0 in this case and that is tied to the po second point, the midpoint on the two resistors. So that point is tied here and the ground of the UNO32 is already there. So that's what we'll be using for our temperature sensor. So let's take a look at that uh, briefly at the UNO32 programming. So we do have a program already written for this. You'll copy and paste it into your uh, MPID um, programming environment. And it uses the analog read command to capture that voltage. And also will write that value out in millivolts using the temperature sensor volts uh, using the serial monitor. Okay? So these are the two key commands that are in that. And so that's what that's, you're going to be using that Next, um, let's take a look at the data you'll need to collect. So there's a better looking graph in the experimental description, so make sure and review the experiment as well as listen to the video here. But So we'll have ice water, room temperature water, and hot water in the room. Um, so you'll complete sample measurements of these. I'll demonstrate that here in just a second. And then we'll also um, mix the, each of the small samples together to make two more options. We have a uh, food thermometer that we'll use to capture the real temperature and we'll use the serial monitor to capture these voltages. I'll demonstrate that here. Why don't we go ahead and demonstrate that right now as an example. So, the, this, I've got the program running. I'm going to activate the serial monitor. Of course, it takes a second for it to start working. And now, as you can see, 
go ahead and come in a little closer here. It is providing this temperature sensor value in millivolts. It's currently reading about 516 and continues to read. And it's got a temperature Celsius value that it's being calculated. Now this isn't calibrated. That's an example of what you'll have to modify as a part of this work. So it continues to read. Uh, the temperature reading is not scaled properly, but the, the voltage value is 516 millivolts. So for this experiment, this is essentially all we're going to be doing. We'll have uh, hot water, uh, room temperature, or medium water, so to speak, and cold water. We've got ice water in the room. And so we're going to take these values. We're going to rest the temperature sensor in the tank and then observe the uh, reading. So in that particular water, we're reading about, we have to wait for it to stabilize. We're reading between still climbing to about 542, 543, so it must be a little bit warm. So, you record the millivolts and the temperature. Let me grab the temperature gauge, activate the food thermometer, also stick it in the water, let it stabilize. As soon as this is stabilized and the other reading is stabilized, it should work out well. So this is reading, this one stabilizes fairly quickly, 19.4. 19.3, and you'll have a partner to work on this, and we're reading uh, 553, so watch those, to make sure that it stabilizes, that was our hot water, so I placed that here, okay, and then of course you go on to do the next sample, we can do the medium water here, and repeat that same reading, uh, my water here is not, uh, I separated in temperature very far, so the readings will be similar. Yours will be much more obvious. So again, complete this reading. Do it again for the cold water. The cold water here is actually a little bit colder, so you can see it dropping to under 16 or near 16. All right, so after completing the cold uh, water measurement, then you can take the cold and the room temperature water, provide a mixed sample there just to change the temperature and complete that sample. Again, watch the reading on the serial monitor with your partner and capture the temperature on the uh, food thermometer. And then your final sample, of course, take the medium and the hot, mix them up to create another sample. Take that reading as well. If mine are going to look very similar, yours will not. So again, you're going to capture these five pieces of data for these five samples and record them in a table like this. Again, this must be done on a spreadsheet. It'll make your life much easier. We're going to get keep your practice going on that. Um, what do you need to do once you have that data? You need to create two graphs. One of temperature versus voltage and then one to uh, flip it around and go voltage versus temperature. We're going to need to add trend lines to the data, include the equation on, and the R-squared value on the chart. So with that data, you can move on and complete the calibration. Let's talk about that. So basically, we're going to correct the program to display the temperature in degrees C. What you have to do is choose which trend line that will convert the voltage value that it's read into temperature. So from your two graphs, you select that equation from the trend line that allows you to convert voltage into temperature. So we're going to select the slope and the y-intercept values, and we're going to insert them in the program. If you read the program carefully, you can see where there's a conversion uh, formula. So use your values, um, insert them, uh, rerun the program, verify it and load it, and then test it out and see how close your program reads to the actual temperature on a, a couple of your samples. Uh, once that's correct, and it looks like it's working properly, update the program to actually say that it's a calibrated value. And so the final piece of completing your calibration is inserting your correct values and editing where it says not calibrated to say calibrated, just to make it clear to us that you've got that piece done. All right, so the last thing you'll have to do is a heating test. All right, so let's look at the system one more time. So again, from last week, we have the heater, which is driven by one of the outputs here. 
and the heater now is inside the tank. And so the first thing we're going to have to do is figure out the volume of the tank. Right? And so what, the quick way to do that, or a quick way to do that, is to go ahead and I have a very full cup of water here. We're going to pour it all in. Oops, I got a leak here because I forgot to put the temperature sensor back in. So this won't be the last time you see a mistake. Hopefully they're mine and not yours. Okay, so now our temperature sensor is in there. And we'll use, so again, if you have full of water, I'm going to go ahead and use all of this water to fill it up. And what you want to do is fill it up with enough water that it overflows. Now, if this hadn't leaked out, water would be accurate, of course. And so now that this has overflowed and I'm going to run the, run the pump, you really should fill it up all the way while it's running. Let it overflow. And so I knew the original mass of the cup. And so now with the leftovers, I put it back and I subtract this mass from the original mass to get the volume of water in the tank. All right, so now that you have that volume, that completes some of the information that you'll need. The next, you'll need to review the work from week nine because it's got the power that is delivered to the heater. So last week, we did experiments to find out how much power the heater drew. And so we've got 12 volts approximately. You'll have accurate readings. It's a half an amp. I don't think that's correct, but it's close. Figure out exactly how many watts your heater was drawing last week. And remember, watts is a joule per second. That's energy per second. This is the value you're going to need. So the next step is to predict the change in temperature uh, that's going to occur, because we're going to heat it for 60 seconds and see if we can detect the change. This comes back to the sensor characteristics we're trying to check. So let's take a quick look at that temperature change formula. So. It's uh, Q is the heat that's going to get added. Uh, CP is the specific heat characteristic for water. This is the mass, in our case, in grams. It's going to be the same as the volume, because grams equals milliliters. And then the change in temperature. So if we want to look for that temperature change, we solve for T and identify these parts of our system. So Q is related to the heater. It's power. Remember, power is joules per second, and we're going to run it for 60 seconds. So that's going to tell us how many joules, that's Q, how much energy is going to go into the water as a result of the heater being on. Next for water, it's a, a specific heat. It's 4.1813 joules per gram degree C. Again, we're keeping the units right. Uh, grams here, and then our, ma our mass is going to be also in grams. So M, again, is mass, the water volume. In our case, milliliters equals grams, and so we can substitute it here. You'll have to complete this calculation to predict your temperature change before you run your 60 seconds of heating. All right, so the next step is go ahead and complete the test. So we're going to make sure the program is still running and updating about once a second so we can collect the temperature data. We're going to run the heater for 60 seconds only and then shut, uh, shut it off. And then we're going to record the time and temperature throughout the whole experiment. It should take about two minutes. Uh, that should be more than enough to see it stabilize. But let's talk about how we're going to run the heater rather than using the UNO32. Let's bypass the UNO32 for just this time around. All right, so we're going to need 3.3 volts, which is usually what the UNO32 puts out for control. We're borrowing it from the voltage divider, and we're going to activate the heater. Let's feed it under here so I can reach it better. And we're going to, when we want the heat, we'll just plug it in here. And assuming the circuits work right, the LED will light up. Okay, so once again, uh, you'll make sure that you're still recording uh, the temperature. And actually, I would probably stop the monitor and then um, start it again. And then once it starts, I would plug in the heater and start your stopwatch. So again, this is recording about uh, once every minute. So record that data uh, for 60 seconds. And when 60 seconds arrives, unplug the heater and continue to record the time and temperature. 
Alright, so what are you going to need by the time you're all done? So from your first set of experiments where you're testing the different temperature water samples, you're going to need two graphs. One is temperature versus voltage, and the other is voltage versus temperature. You're going to have to decide which one of these trend lines and uh, equations is going to be more suited to figuring out uh, the calibration. All right, so again, add, make sure your graphs include the trend line, the equation, and the R squared value. All right. Now the last experiment with the heater test, we want to see how the heat, how the temperature changes over time. And so we're going to take about two minutes worth of data, graph it, and you should see data, a small change in temperature. So you'll be able to modify your graph so it's more meaningful. But uh, let's see these before the end of class on Tuesday. All right, or uh, before you end of class this week. All right, so that brings us to an end. We'll do a si very similar activity during week 11 for the salinity sensor, and we'll shoot a video for that and have it uh, ready for you.